begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus tells us to go and share him with all people. But so often I'm more scared of what other people think about me than what God thinks about me. I do things I know I should. I stay silent when I know I should because I fear the opinion of others. That's sin. Let's take a moment in silent confession, admitting our sins to God, whether it's this sin or other sins we've committed this week. Dear friends, let's approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. He has declared to you the good news that you so desperately need. You are forgiven. So hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I, for, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, O Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only son, but gave him up for us all. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Son of God, eternal word of the Father, you came to live with us, you made your Father known, you washed us from our sins in your own blood, you are the King of glory, you are the Lord, O Lord, O Lord, Let's pray. Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our first lesson, we are told explicitly that we are to love one another. Our first lesson comes from 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. 
And every spirit who does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is already in the world. You are from God, dear children. And you have overcome the false prophets because the one who is in you is greater than the one in the world. They are from the world. That's why they speak from a worldly perspective and the world listens to them. We are from God. The one who knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. That's how we can distinguish between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Dear friends, let's love one another because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love has not known God because God is love. This is how God's love for us was revealed. God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we may live through him. Now, this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us so much, we also should love one another. This is God's word. We can continue with our psalm of the day. We can love because God has made his salvation known. We'll sing the refrain and speak the verses responsibly. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known. And revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Durst in the jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with a harp and the sound of singing. Sing for joy before the Lord, the King. Judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Out of respect of the very words of Jesus, please stand. Jesus tells us not only to love one another, but to remain in his love. Our gospel is from John, John 15, where Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so also have I loved you. Remain in my love. If you hold on to my commands, you'll remain in my love, just as I've held on to my father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that my joy would continue to be in you and that your joy would be complete. Now, this is my command. Love one another as I've loved you. No one has greater love than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you continue to do the things I instruct you. I no longer call you servants, because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends, because everything that I heard from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will endure, so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. These things I'm instructing you, so that you love one another. This is God's gospel. Please be seated.
we continue with our responsive verse of the day. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. Let's encourage one another. Let's confess what we believe today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The part of the Bible we're going to be focusing on today comes from Acts chapter 9. There the Bible says, in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please, come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room, and he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. This is God's word. Grace and mercy and peace are yours from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to say something that's a little creepy. One of the best parts of, our mini of my ministry is when I get to watch someone die. Now, I, I realize that is really creepy, but it is an incredibly intense privilege. God has given us the technology and sometimes he allows us the ability to know when someone is going to die or at least have a, a pretty good prediction of it. I'll get the phone call. Pastor, come quick. And I get there as fast as I can. If the person is uh, married, very often the spouse will be on one side of the bed and I'll be on the other and I'll be holding the person's hands. Science tells us that as the body shuts down and this brain shuts down, the last sense that a person usually has is hearing. So even after the person has closed their eyes, even as the person is no longer able to speak, very often God has allowed that the ears still work. And so as I'm sitting next to that person, I will read them God's promises. I'll read them passages like uh, from John 15, where Jesus says, in my father's house are many rooms. For not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you so that you can be with me where I am. If I'm going there to prepare a place, I'm going to come back to take you to be with me. I'll read favorite Psalms like Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'll read passages like 1 Corinthians 15. Where it says that Jesus has defeated death. Death has lost its sting. 
I'll pray out loud. I had a professor once who said that 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 privilege is kind of like being an usher to heaven. That you're guiding a person to their seat. And you tell them, enjoy the show. And as that person breathes at her last and their heart stills, I'm the one who got to walk them there. And it is an amazing privilege. Now, that part is something that is just amazing. But the days that follow are not always as blessed. Because what happens as people are mourning and as they're hurting, they get really emotional. And sometimes things don't work out the way that you want them to. See, as people mourn, what happens is that our sinful natures use that as an opportunity to try and take control. Our sinful natures do not want this to be about Jesus anymore. One time a young mother died in a congregation I was serving. And as I sat down with the family to plan out the funeral, her brother told me, pastor, don't you dare say my sister was a sinner or I will stop right in the middle of the funeral and I will punch you. And this is a guy who had actually punched my predecessor of that congregation. This is a guy that if he punched me, yes, I would be hurting. In other words, I was about to give some dangerous testimony. And when that day happened, when that funeral came, I stood behind the pulpit and I said, this woman was a sinner. And if you think that I'm wrong, you're calling this woman a liar. Because I said it, I saw it, she sat right there every Sunday morning and she confessed her sins. She knew that she was a sinner. And I saw her when I announced forgiveness. She closed her eyes and, and rejoiced that Jesus would forgive a sinner like her. Now, I am very, very grateful that man did not punch me. But he could have. It was a dangerous testimony. Now, that time when people are hurting and mourning, that should be the time when Jesus is the most comforting. But again, that sinful nature, that is so tricky. So what do you do? How do you share Jesus when that is so dangerous to share him? Peter was staying in a town named Lydda. He had been used to do some miracles there. He was sharing Jesus. He was one of Jesus' inner circle. And now he was sharing Jesus anywhere he went. When there came a knock on his door. Peter met two men at the door and the men said, Peter, come quick, please. There's this woman named Tabitha. She also goes by Dorcas. And yes, I realize that's a funny name in English. It was not a funny name back then. Dorcas, come quick. She's died. She, she was a disciple who knew the charity of God. She knew how, how Jesus shared his wealth with her. And so she shared charity with everyone else. She made clothing with her hands and gave it away. She gave it away to widows and, and the poor people who couldn't who couldn't afford their own clothing. Come quick, Peter, if you can do anything, come quick. And Peter went with them. They went to a nearby town named Java. And when they arrived at the house, they were not met with people who were just sitting there silently weeping. They were met with screaming. These days, uh, often, at least in the funerals I've attended, either as a family member or a friend or as a pastor, usually it's relatively quiet. But that's not what it was like in the culture back then. When people were mourning, they screamed. They, they let their pain out, and it was loud. And when Peter got there, not only was this going on, but when the widows realized who Peter was, they took all the clothing that, that Tabitha had made for them and said, Look! Look at what she did. Look at how good a person she was. And this is one of the big tricks that our sinful natures will play on us when we're mourning. Maybe you can identify with this. 
that when someone dies, you start thinking, that was such a good person. And maybe that person had blessed you in many ways. Maybe you knew their love. Maybe you'd seen their service to you and you missed that service. And that is totally fair. But what happens is that our sinful natures take that and they twist it into that person is such a good person, they must be in heaven. Our sinful natures take the blessings we received and twist it into works righteousness. And that is so, so very dangerous. Because then you say that person is heaven because of what they did, instead of that person is in heaven because of what Jesus did. The Bible is really clear. There is no one good. No, not all. We have all sinned and fallen short the glory of God. That person may have blessed you in many ways. And again, be thankful for that. Don't shy away from that. But be aware of what your sinful nature does with that. It's actually one of the reasons why in Wells churches, you will not often hear eulogies. Because we are aware of that, how that sinful nature twists things. We want it to be about what Jesus has done. That he has brought another sinner home to him. And so what does Peter do? All these widows are screaming and hollering and saying, what a good woman this Tabitha was. And Peter says, can you step out for a little bit? Now, th that's how I imagine him saying it. Maybe he was a little bit more rude about it. Peter sometimes could be a little brusque. Maybe he said, get out. I don't think he said it that way, though. Until it's just him and Tabitha in the room. And the word in the Greek is really explicit. It doesn't say Peter and Tabitha, it says Peter and the corpse. It underlines that this is a dead body. And Peter gets down on his knees and he prays. He pleads with God. And then Peter looks at the corpse and he says, Dorcas, get up. And she blinks her eyes. She sits up. Peter offers his hand and she stands. She's alive again. And Peter presents her to the city. And the last verse that we had said that many in Joppa in that city came to believe in Jesus. Not in Peter. Peter pointed to Jesus. Not in Tabitha. Tabitha pointed to Jesus. Because Tabitha's good works didn't save her, Jesus did. Because Peter's good works didn't save Tabitha, Jesus did. It's all about what Jesus has done. So there are three things to get out of this. First, Jesus is better. And I want you to understand that when I say that, that is dangerous, dangerous testimony. One time I posted on Facebook, Jesus is better than Santa Claus. And I got people really, really, really angry at me. I got unfriended over that. Now, Jesus gives gifts just because he loves you. Santa Claus gives gifts if you behave. I think Jesus is better than that. But people got really angry when I said Jesus is better. Because what happens is when you say Jesus is better than whatever it is that you love most, the sinful nature again gets really, really angry. And that shows up at funerals. Jesus is better than what that person did. Oh, no, pastor, you can't say that. But Jesus is. See, that person, again, may have blessed you in so many ways. And I want you to value that again. Say thank you to God for how you've been blessed through that person. But Jesus is even better than that person. Maybe that person loved you a lot. Jesus loves you even more. Maybe that person forgave you a lot because you were a real twerp. Jesus forgives you even more. Maybe that person paid for you. Jesus paid even more. That, per that person may be blessed, but Jesus is better. And, and maybe that sounds really dangerous even today on Mother's Day. Mothers, you've been used to bless so many people, and that's really, really awesome. Jesus is better than moms. Okay, no one's throwing rocks. I appreciate that. 
But that's kind of a dangerous thing to say today, isn't it? But moms, I want you to find comfort in that. Moms carry a lot of guilt. Did I mess up my kid? Should I have done this instead? If I had just done this instead, it would have been better for them. And there, there's so much guilt associated with being a mom. And I want you to know, moms, Jesus died for you. He didn't die for you to be a good mom. He died for you so that you could be his daughter and make you his own. And he accepts you. And all your sins, all your guilt is gone. Sometimes it's people that, that ache to hold someone in their arms. And there's guilt associated with that. If that's you, Jesus loves you and you're not being punished. Sometimes it's the guys. Guys, we're not moms. I'm not a mom. I've never been a mom. But sometimes we have guilt being associated with a parent or a child. Maybe we think about the way we treated our moms. Jesus is better. He loves you and forgives you. And so Jesus is better. He accepts you in ways that, that mom never did and never could and loves you so much more. And that's not a bash on moms. Because moms are pretty awesome. Jesus is just that much better. So I want you to remember this. When, when you're giving this dangerous testimony that Jesus is better. The next thing I'm going to say, the second thing I want you to remember is going to sound really dumb. Death is bad. And I recognize that. That sounds like such a dumb thing to say. And yet, I don't know, if you've been to a bunch of funerals, if you've even been to one funeral, you've probably heard something along the lines of, well, you know, it's natural and they're in a better place and you shouldn't cry. And, and these, these things that are said are well-intentioned but death isn't natural. God created us to live forever. Death is only a result of our sin. Death is not natural. When, when Jesus rose from the dead, it was him actually restoring the natural order, what was always supposed to happen. You know, Jesus wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. If it's okay for Jesus to cry, it's okay for us to cry. Jesus looks at this broken world and he says, this is not what I designed it to be. And so I want you to know that when someone is hurting, it's okay that they hurt. When someone is mourning, it's okay that they're mourning. Death is bad. It's not what God designed us to do. So remember first, Jesus is better. Second, death is bad. Third. Eternal life is real. God is more powerful than death. Jesus overcame death. And so while it's okay to hurt, know that that hurting is temporary. That Jesus has promised that he will wipe every tear from your eyes. The first Corinthians says that death has lost its sting. When you get stung by a bee, it hurts, right? It's probably not something you're going to ignore. Maybe, maybe you're dead inside and you don't get to feel, feel that, but generally bees hurt. But one of the big reasons they hurt is that there's actually a venom sac attached to that sting. Imagine if someone went in and surgically removed the venom sac and then the bee stung you. You used to go, ow, but it wouldn't hurt nearly as much. That's what Jesus has done for you. Death still hurts. It's still bad, but it's lost its sting because you know what's coming. Because you know that you're going to wake up in heaven, surrounded by those who have gone before you, welcoming you, throwing a party. Look, you've made it home. Welcome home. And then you get to throw that same party for those who will come after you. And on the last day, you're going to wake up with your body made pure. And you will live forever. And this is real. It's not a dream. It's not a maybe. 
It is a for sure future. And this is how you give the dangerous testimony to those who are hurting. Look, Jesus is better than what you've lost. Yes, death is bad, but eternal life is real. And I want to go back to Tabitha for just a moment, this woman that was dead. I was doing some research on her, and we don't know a whole lot about her. Was she a widow? Is that why she was taking care of widows? Is that she identified with them? Was she married? Did she have a bunch of kids that were there that were weeping? Did she have a job? We don't know. But you know what we know about her? She was a disciple. That's what it says. There was a disciple named Tabitha. That's one of the ways the Bible talks about someone who trusts in Jesus. That's what we know about her. She knew that Jesus was better than what she did. And that's why she did what she did. Because Jesus was better. Let's live that way. So when people talk about us, they don't say, yeah, that person was. But this person knew that Jesus was better. And that's why they lived how they lived. Let's give this dangerous testimony. Amen. We're going to review now what Jesus has done about death and what we believe about it with our catechism. But deliver us from evil. What does this mean? In conclusion, we pray in this petition that our Father in heaven would deliver us from every evil that threatens body and soul, property and reputation. And finally, when our last hour comes, grant us a blessed end and graciously take us from this world of sorrow to himself in heaven. We're gonna continue now with our prayer of the church. We're gonna be praying Thanksgiving for moms and for God to watch over moms. We're going to be praying for Patty Rading, who fell last week and broke her ankle, that God gives continued healing. We'll be praying for Trish Peterson, who had surgery Friday and is healing and is already back with us. Um, I believe that's all the prayer requests this week. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, you hurt. This world was not what you designed it to be, and you hurt for us. You sent your son to rescue us from this broken world. And for that, we thank and we rejoice. Oh, it is so good to know that, that you know what it is to hurt and that you are taking us from this broken place. When we mourn, comfort us, Lord. When others mourn, help us to comfort them, to be with them, to encourage them, to hurt with them. And in the end, to point to you as the answer to all this brokenness. Be with those who hurt, Lord. Today, we especially pray for Patty and Trish. Continue to be with them. We thank you that you've preserved them. But now, Lord, if it's your will, continue to heal them. Encourage them in these difficult times. We thank you for mothers. The blessing you've given so many of us. Continue to be with them. We thank you for those mothers who taught us about you. For those mothers who don't know you yet, send your Holy Spirit and your word. Create faith. For those who are mourning, those mothers who are now in heaven, comfort us and help us to rejoice. For those who hurt because they are not mothers or they have lost their children, be with them, Lord. Comfort them in their pain. Teach them to trust in you and help us to show mercy and compassion. For those of us who have been hurt by mothers, be with us as well. Help us learn how to love and forgive. Lord, protect mothers around this world and in our community. Help us to appreciate them and encourage. We pray all this in your name. Amen. We join in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare for communion, we join in singing about the Lamb of God who gives himself as the feast. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come forward at the instruction of the ushers. The feast is prepared. You are welcome at the table of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. Take and eat. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take also and drink. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. You are welcome at the table for work. You may know if you wish. Take and eat. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take also and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. You are welcome at the table for work. You may do what you wish. 
take and eat. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take also and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in the one true faith that's a life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. You are welcome at the table of the Lord. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. Take also and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you and strengthen you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be strengthening in the one true faith of the Lord. Part of peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. This is the true body of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ bring you in. Let's continue now with Thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who sing the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing about this peace that we have, this dangerous testimony that God has given us such amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me. I hope Will my shield and portion be as long as life endures? Through many dangers or tests, I have already come. Good morning and welcome. Happy Mother's Day. Lord be with you till we meet again.